This is a review of the Marine Biology Unit Study, Science Unit Study from The Good and the Beautiful. And we've been using it now, we're about halfway through, not quite halfway through. So I think it's a good time to kind of show you how we use it, how we've done our setup, and uh, what we think about the program. So in general, when you receive something from The Good and the Beautiful for the unit studies, they're going to come like this. So basically you have all of your um, color copies of everything that I'll show you how I divide mine out, but um, all together here kind of bound in, um, in the cellophane. And then you have the books that you need to buy for the unit. So the science packets will come with these. You get a PDF copy as well, which is really nice because you end up printing out some child um, activity sheets that you have throughout. And so it's nice to have the PDF and you don't necessarily want to use your originals for that. And then you you buy the other books. That usually there's two books that you need to have for the unit. So for marine biology, now the marine biology, if you just want to get the PDF, they actually have this for free right now on the Good and the Beautiful site. So you can download this whole thing. It's a really huge file because as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to it. And it's it all has these amazing, beautiful, graphics and watercolors and stuff but what it means is that the file size is really large but you could print this out yourself if that's how you want to do it I, I find that the printing cost for printing this out makes it actually more affordable to just buy the unit study from the good and the beautiful you're going to save on the printing cost but i suppose if you didn't want to print out every individual sheet or you just want to give it a try for a while and and see how you like it then go ahead and just get the download the freebie for now. There are two books that you're going to need. I have those two over here. So um, if you do like it, then you at least are going to have to buy the books, um, but you may not have to buy the full set if you don't want to buy the whole set. So here is what the set looks like. You pretty much, um, I have taken mine and put it into um, paid protector pages like this. And then for each of the sections, let me go into one of the sections. So this is actually, a, let's see, this is three or four inch wide binder. So even though when you receive it, you're like, oh, that's only a half inch worth of stuff. Well, once you kind of break it out and take everything out of there um, and laminate stuff, then you're gonna find that you need at least a three inch binder. So I believe this is a three inch, it might be a four inch. And then I have these little, divider tabs and so it's a divider tab i typed up little labels for these and then they each have a pocket and the reason that i have that is you're going to have different vocab words that you have throughout the time and it's nice to just have your vocab words if there's any sort of resource like a book or something it's nice to be able to slide that in there and then whatever i'm showing to the girls whatever i'm going to put up on our board i'll put that in here as well and so I keep all of my teacher items on one side of the pocket, and then I keep the student version of the page, the page that I actually made copies of on this side. So for future use, the idea with these unit studies is that you can go through this multiple times. So we'll go through marine biology right now, and then you know three years, four years from now, we'll hit it up again, they'll go more in depth, and they have some stuff that's more in depth for older years, like seventh, eighth grade, and then I wanna still have all my original stuff in its format. So that's why I make photocopies of the student sheets. So what a typical week, or I should say lesson would look like, and on this particular unit, there's 14 lessons. Some people will do, will divide out a lesson and do it over the course of two days. We will do a day where we just do one of the lessons, but we only usually do this once or twice a week. And that's because we have a different science that we do as part of one of our co-ops. So what an actual lesson could look like is you will have, um, they might mention some other read aloud books and they'll give you an idea of some other um, books you could use. And then you'll have your vocab word that you introduce. They talk about having your science wall, which is you know one of the walls of your homeschool space. I don't really have a wall space because we are we do our school in a loft area, so you know I have these ceilings that are on an angle, so I don't really have ceiling space. So instead, I actually just keep this big whiteboard, and so I'll put up the vocab words that are relevant to kind of what we've been doing lately, and then any of the sheets and stuff that we're doing, I'll use this sticky tack 
which is just kind of like this uh, tacky stuff, and it lets this go onto the, um, stay onto the whiteboard. So this is an example of what that board looks like when it's put together, and then I can easily peel off stuff and then put the new stuff as we're using it. So I don't really have the space to dedicate like a whole wall to science, but this seems to work just fine. So going back to what the actual lesson looks like, let me pull this back up. So you'll go through, you usually have a new vocab board to go through. And then there it usually is some sort of kind of experiment, more kind of like showing you science in action. It's not necessarily set up like a full experiment, um, but it will tell you what you're going to read to the kids. It'll tell you how to do it, and it gives you a heads up on what you're going to need for the day. And all of the materials list is in the front of the book too. So if you wanna look ahead and say, here's all the things I'm going to need throughout the week so you can pull your resources together. The other nice thing is if you don't want to do the experiment yourself, like on um, this particular one, I think we were just kind of busy this day. If you don't want to do it yourself, you can just watch it online. So you can go to the Good and the Beautiful website and they have the videos. So let me just show you their website real quick. Um, so this is Marine Biology. As you can see, it's $27 to buy it. Um, if you just wanted to download the free PDF, it's free. I don't know, maybe it's not still free anymore though because um, I'm not seeing it right here. Oh no, free download available. So it looks like it is still free. We just bought the normal packet and we bought the read aloud books, uh, which are the two books. Um, and that's because you need, you need those for that. And then they have the videos. So if you go into the videos area, you can see the different videos that tie to the lessons. So um, they actually have all their science videos in here, so this might take a second while it loads real quick for me. Um, but they will have this experiment on their video page. So if you didn't wanna do it, if you didn't have the supplies, you're traveling or whatever, and you just don't wanna make a big mess or have a big experiment, you can watch them do the experiment. So that's really cool. Um, the other thing that they'll have videos for are some of the educational things. So maybe we were just going through and they were talking about coral reefs. And so they have a video online and it's on their website. It's, I think it's also on YouTube and you can watch about the coral reefs. They're not usually that long. I would say most of the videos are probably about six, seven minutes in length. So just enough time to uh, show the information and give it to your kids and really still keep them very interested in it. So then you ask questions to the kids. What did they notice? What did they learn about it? And then in this particular lesson, we're reading one of the mini books, which are one of the little books that are put together. And that came from the packet information. And then uh, they're doing a science journal page. So that's one of the kids activity pages. So when I received the packet of information, the first thing that I did is I went through and I decided what did I wanna laminate? What did I need copies of for the kids? And then, um, what did I just need for my for my teacher book, for my resources, and what should I laminate for that? So I've kind of went through and decided that for things like these mini books, and for the marine biology, there's four of these little mini books throughout, and they are little half pages. So when I received it, this was on the same page as this page. So those are together, you cut them in half, and then I saw somebody else had done this where they just laminated the first page and the last page of the book. And then it's pretty easy to just staple or actually I decided to hole punch. So my newer ones are hole punched with a little ring on them. And then you can just go through and read it. So it, it's just enough to keep it held together. And do you need to laminate it? No, you don't. You totally could just, you know, cut it in half, put a little staple in the corner and call it done and not worry about doing too much effort. But um, by laminating it, it, just makes it a little bit more durable. Same thing with the vocab words. You don't need to laminate these either, but it really does kind of help keep it together and make it more put together. So I took these sheets and they'll usually have, uh, I think it's four of these on an eight and a half by 11. So I just stuck them through my laminator and it just makes them nice and durable and easy to pull on and off. Um, sometimes a sheet where I'm just going to show them and I'm just going to put it up on the board briefly and nobody's actually touching it, I won't worry about laminating it because it's just more work and I don't need to worry about laminating it. So that's kind of how I decided 
what things are laminated and what things are not. Um, some of the items, like this is kind of a, a game where they're taking the different uh, categories. So they have vertebrates and invertebrates and stuff, and they have various different pictures of marine life and they're categorizing them as one or another. And because the kids are going to touch these and get their hands all over them, I did laminate these ahead of time and then cut them out and I stick them in little baggies and then they're ready to go and we have them. We already used these, so we, we had our day with this, but now that I'm sticking them back in here, it's easy to get them out You know, three or four years down the road when we go through marine biology again. I know I have all my stuff right here and put together. So that is just a nice uh, feature. It's nice to just laminate these. Um, here's what I'm saying on the newer ones, how I just took and put a little ring and um, just did a hole punch on the corner of these and we go through. So, so you have some mini books that they include. You have your vocab words. You have plenty of pictures and graphics. So many bright, beautiful things that really keep the kids interested. And then um, in terms of Oh, I should show this real quickly too. So for each of the lessons, they also have what they call an extension. And these are meant to be for seven and eighth graders. So this is a little bit more in depth. It's a, it's a little bit more mature, the information that they go through, some of the vocab, and then whatever their uh, project is that they do or experiment. Um, so they'll have different stuff that they tell you about it and kind of how to study it. Sometimes there's more of like a little experiment. The, the shark one's kind of cool. You know, classifying ocean life, maybe getting into it a little bit more in depth than what the younger kids would do. And you can always d decide how much of this material you want to cover. My kids are third and fourth grade and they really love science. Uh, they do a lot of science. So it's pretty easy for them to go through and listen and, and try to learn all the information that we're covering on here. I don't do the extensions with them um, because then we have something to look forward to the next time we come through and do this um, unit again. But in terms of the kids packs, what I did for my kids is on all of the student pages, I actually took that PDF and I just kept the copies of the things that I need to be printed up as student pages. And I used one of my, I have a homeschool discount at Office Depot and I just had them print up for me you know, for 20 cents a sheet, all the pages that I need for the kids. And then I put those together in these little science books. So these are just the little three prong folders, um, but they have their book. And then as we're going through, they're filling in their information. And so, you know, they have their little experiments that they're doing, things that they glue together, um, coloring sheets. They've been Lately, this is what we're working on right now, are these little invertebrate booklets. So this all came through, and then as the kids are going through, they can add their information and their details to their little books. And they have this nice, cool thing that they've put together that they can keep and share and show with other people about the information that they've learned. So overall, I really have loved this program. I think it is so good for the unit studies. We have not found anything for science that we have really loved. We've been homeschooling for six years. I've gone through a number of programs. Apology has been okay. Barian Builders has been okay. Um, uh, we do stuff with CC, but really I haven't been as excited about science until we got the good and the beautiful unit study. So absolutely, we will continue to work on these. I, I think they just do a great job of presenting the information. They make it colorful and bright. The illustrations are beautiful, interactive and um, really affordable. So uh, we're going to keep using them. As you can tell, this is our next unit. And I think that it's a great thing to add to your homeschool. So hopefully this useful, this video was useful to you. Uh, if it was, give, give it a thumbs up. That'd be great. You could subscribe for more content on homeschooling and RV travel and fun stuff like that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask below. And I try to make sure to get back to everybody on your questions. Thanks so much.